three, two, one. Hey guys, Josh Weidman here with Turnkey Philly coming live from Fort Washington. Today is Monday. Uh, we are looking at the 16th of May. Beautiful day outside, a little bit cold, but I wanted to come at you with something that I have come across a lot recently in the forums. People looking around, taking a look at the opportunities out there for turnkey investing. Uh, and I've seen some really conflicting answers on, you know, what to look for in a turnkey provider and as turnkey the right outlet so i want to do a quick video of blog today and talk about some things to look at if you are potentially looking into investing in a turnkey uh, property that's either in your city or perhaps it's halfway across the country halfway across the world so let's jump into this number one one thing that first you have to define is what is a turnkey investment okay so yeah i know that sounds like um it should be pretty straightforward but there's different versions whether you're looking at an mls property that you know the seller or the agent says hey this is turnkey it's ready to move in uh, or you're talking to somebody who is a turnkey investment provider and they're saying you know this property is turnkey and you know they may mean that they're providing um, you know the it's already tenant occupied it's already rented and it's immediately in a cash flow or they might mean that the property needs to be renovated and then a tenant placed in there and then then it'll be a turnkey model um, but it really depends on what you're looking for you know what you need to you know keep an eye on you want to make sure that whatever you're looking for you're able to clearly define and clearly discuss with this uh, potential provider, okay? So whether it is an agent down the street or whether it's someone halfway across the country, halfway across the world, you wanna make sure that you're using the same language. What do they mean by turnkey, okay? So that's number one, all right? Number two, we gotta figure out what our goals and our ambitions are and really what our time frames are with this turnkey investing investment because that's going to have a big impact on the type of investment the type of properties uh, and really the type of criteria that you're going to look for in these turnkey properties all right so what am i talking about first and foremost you know a lot of people talk about um real estate investing as a cash flow uh, play when it comes to rental properties and buy and holds that's not really my outlook on it however you know that might be yours if you are looking for a cash flow play you're primary goal is not going to be to have a bazillion dollars in equity in the property you know you're probably going to be investing in areas that are going to cash flow that have a really high rent to value ratio and that there's a track record of of successful collections and, and things like that so that's one thing that you want to look at if you're looking to build wealth you know if your idea is a slow play where you can build this portfolio year after year after year maybe you're buying an extra one or two or three properties uh, every year and you know certainly you want to leverage that money with a bank loan but the idea is to pay that money down over time and you know what the cash flow is great but it's not the primary focus you're gonna be looking in completely different neighborhoods you're gonna look in in more a and b class neighborhoods or maybe some emerging markets where you know it's right on the fringes of a nice area uh, and you're looking at that and you're saying you know what I'm gonna hold on to this and right now it might be a C plus neighborhood B minus but in five or ten years you know just the trend of the neighborhood and the trend of the area is going to you know we're, I'm gonna have an A class property that I'm able to buy now at a B C price point point. and yeah you know what it might make sense to sacrifice some cash flow if that is your long-term strategy and that is your goal okay um, and then you have option number three I mean I look at my, my model for investing in, in uh, rental properties is a little bit different. It's more of a, uh, a little piggy bank or savings account. You know? So if your goal is a savings account where you, you know, you're gonna put some money into this property, you're gonna renovate it really, really well, um, you're gonna sit on that property for you know, let's say 10 years, and over that 10 year period, in my model, I wanna pay that thing down. All of my cash flow, except for my reserves, are going right to pay down that mortgage, pay down the mortgage, and guess what? It's all coming from the tenant, which is nice. But then in 10 years, I've got a free and clear property that's worth $100,000, $200,000 that I can either cash out of, or I can, you know, I got a free and clear rental property, which is also nice. So I, I look at it kind of the saving model. In addition to the type of properties and the areas that you're gonna be looking at, you're also going to be looking at the type of renovations, right? So if you're looking at primar primarily cash flow, it's going to be a different play 
than if you're looking at, hey, this property looks like it's in an emerging market. Let's just do the least amount we can in that emerging market. Get a tenant in there because it's probably not going to have great cash flow. But we know that in three, five, ten years from now, you're going to have a really fantastic asset and you can go in and spend the type of money that it's going to take to attract that, that A-grade tenant. You know, whereas with a cash flow model, we want to eliminate as many problems and as many um, ongoing expenses as we can, right? So it makes sense to calculate that in up front, to put the initial investment into the repairs, and to buy something that is really going to have zero um, or close to zero maintenance costs, right? So that's that's important. Now the other other point that I pushed on here is time frame. Time frame is huge. Uh, I. I'm a big proponent of a longer time frame when it comes to rentals. It's very important to know the the um, the cycle in the, of real estate in general, the real estate cycle. I, I got in uh, to real estate just at the end of 2006, going into 2007, and um, you know I sometimes I look back and I'm really thankful that I missed the peak of the market. I got in uh, and you know ended up wholesaling a lot of deals, but didn't end up having a lot of inventory that I was holding when the market crashed. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter because now all, a lot of those properties, they've recovered. And in many areas, the, the price points are higher than they were in 2006 at the peak. But you look at that cycle, and we're looking at a 10-year cycle. With that being said, you know maybe the last 10 years were a little bit uh, of an anomaly, especially with the, the crash in 2008. But there's there's going to be market corrections. Every 10 years, you're going to have a peak, you're going to have a valley, you're going to have corrections and ups and downs and ebbs and flows in the market. So it's something that you have to consider. If you're looking at a very short time frame, like the three to five year time frame, well, you're going to be looking at different types of properties. You're going to be looking at, you're going to need to buy with a ton of equity because if you don't and you try to get out and there's a, say, 10 or 15% correction and you bought at the top of the market, now you're stuck in this property. So equity is a part of the play. It's part of the analysis. You have to know that, you know, when you are planning to get out of this thing. If you're looking at the five to 10 year Time frame, which is my my personal recommend, recommendation for all of uh, my turnkey clients, is that if you're looking at that five to ten year time frame, preferably on that tail end of the ten years, you're able to kind of look back and say, say, okay, where's the market going? When was the last time we had a peak? When was the last time we we hit a valley? And you're able to play out when's the best time to jump in and jump out of an investment to get the best return for that property. And then, you know, you've got the third category, which is like 10 plus forever years. You know, any investment really on the long enough time, uh, time frame, um, it's going to be a good enough, it's going to be a pretty darn good investment. One really hot market um, that's relatively near me is the D.C. market. It is so difficult to find cash flowing properties in, in Washington, D.C., but there's, there's plenty of rental properties there. There's plenty of opportunities to rent. Well, how's that work? Well, people have owned these properties for 20, 30, 40 years, and so they bought at a different time in the market. They bought at a different, um, a different phase, and you know the, the values were different. You gotta keep that in mind when you are buying. If you're buying for the long term and you're really looking at some institutional wealth and you just wanna build and you, know, you figure, hey, look, I'm gonna pass this on to my kids, they're gonna pass it on to their kids, you're gonna be looking at a little bit more of a stable model you're looking at something that you may be willing to uh, sacrifice cash flow today to pay down that the, you know the the purchase price. You're probably going to be looking at a little bit different areas and more the B plus to A uh, A grade neighborhoods, so that you've got very very stable investments that are you know you're not going to have tenants that really need to be evicted all that often. You might have one eviction in 20 years, as opposed to something in a little bit more of a, an aggressive um, B minus, C plus, or you know, lower class neighborhood, you're gonna have a lot more evictions, a little bit more hands-on management. So you know, regardless of what type of, um, of property you're looking at, or different turnkey providers, or you're looking at just different investments in general, you really have to go into them and you gotta to think to yourself, okay, what is my goal, what's my objective here? Is it just to buy a property because it seems cool and it seems like now's the time to buy? That's a terrible reason to invest. A good reason is that you want, you know, you have certain financial goals that you wanna reach. A good reason is that you have an exit strategy or a time frame involved so that you know going in, this is the type of property that I need to get, the type of cash flow, the type of equity spread that I'm gonna need, and 
really the type of repairs that I'm going to be putting into this property as I jump into the market. Okay. So all of that, you know, you've defined what type of investment you're looking for, truly hands off turnkey where you've got somebody sourcing the property, doing the renovations, placing the tenant, managing it, and, and it ends up being more of a stock or mutual fund. That's one type of turnkey. You've got the type of turnkey that already is cash flowing. It's already renovated, already has a tenant in there. All you have to do literally is go to closing, you sign the docs, hand the keys over to the management company and you're out. Or you've got the third type that is much more hands-on where you know the property is in good shape and it's tenant ready, <laughs> where you know you may or may not know what type of renovations are being done, but it might be a little bit of a, a discount or a decent deal coming from an agent. Whatever your comfort level, that's really what you have to go with. Second, you set your goals and your timelines. And number three, this is often overlooked if you're looking for a very hands-on um, turnkey company where you're gonna be, literally the, the management company is going to be hands-on, you're gonna be very hands-off. The quality of the management team is gonna determine whether you're gonna have a successful investment or if it's just gonna be terrible, okay? So even if you've got the best of properties in you know, great property, good area, cash flows on paper, great. If you've got somebody that's not there to place a good tenant and screen them, if you got some, not, don't have somebody that is going to be able to respond to service requests quickly, if you don't have somebody that's going to be able to collect rent and give you, you know, collect the rent and get it to you in a, in a timely manner, um, you know, it's going to be a problem. So make sure you vet the management team as much as you're vetting the property, as much as you're vetting the turnkey company, and if they work together with that management team or are part of that uh, management team, you know, make sure you're doing site visits and understanding their processes and, and, um, and seeing what works and what doesn't. And you know, making a, an understandable and a very clear decision based on, um, based on actual knowledge and uh, you know, what, what's actually happening in the market. So, you know, I hope that answers the question. I, there's, as I said, there's a lot of talk on, on a couple forums about, you know, uh, what did I look for if, if I'm looking for a turnkey? Is there somebody in my backyard or whatever? So whether you're looking for a turnkey investment in your backyard, you're looking for a company somewhere across the country or, you know, on the other side of the world, whatever, just make sure you take these things in consideration before you jump headlong into, into that investment, all right? So that's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for giving me your time. Uh, again, I'm Josh Weidman with Turnkey Philly. For more information about investing in turnkey investments in Philadelphia, go to turnkeyphilly.com. Uh, that's it. Have a great day, and I wish you the best of, of luck in your real estate investing.